Hello, welcome back. What's new in Pro Tools 2022.4? The April 2022 release of Pro Tools has some, some cool features, a, a new name change, um, and more importantly, some of the things that I think are the coolest part of this new release are not even listed in the What's New document, and that's what I'm looking at right here. This is um, the What's New in Pro Tools 2022.4. You can download this from the Avid website, or if you've installed this software already, this version, it's already on your system. Look in your Pro Tools documentation and you'll find it here. Some cool stuff. I mentioned the naming, custom keyboard shortcuts. That's been a long time feature request for, for many, many years. So that's here now and it's very um, in depth. It's pretty cool. Pro Tools Surge, Video Color Space, Dolby Atmos improvements, and miscellaneous new features. The two big things to me are advanced automation is now available in what used to be called Pro Tools, that's now called Pro Tools Studio, the new name with this release. These advanced automation features are super powerful and they were previously only available in Pro Tools Ultimate. Now they're available in Pro Tools Studio. And also along with that is multi-channel tracks. So you can do 5.1, 7.1, more importantly, you can do Dolby Atmos with uh, Pro Tools Studio. This again, previously required Pro Tools Ultimate. So um, this is, is a huge thing and we're gonna dig into that because I think a lot of these advanced automation features are um, kind of go under the radar, even for Pro Tools Ultimate users. So anyway, stick, stick around and uh, we're gonna dig in on this right now. Okay, the first thing we want to dig into um, is what Avid is calling the new subscription tiers. In the past, there was three flavors of Pro Tools. There was the Pro Tools first version. It was free, super, super limited, scaled down, not very functional. I think it had 16 tracks of audio and it was really kind of dumbed down to the point where it wasn't really helpful. And then the middle one was just called Pro Tools. I referred to it as Pro Tools Standard. And of course, the big version of Pro Tools was Pro Tools Ultimate. Those have kind of been shifted around a little bit. So Pro Tools first is gone. The free, free version is gone. Um, now is the, the smallest version is called Pro Tools Artist. It's nine or $10 a month, $9.99 or uh, $99 a year. And it has, uh, real Pro Tools functionality. Thank, thank you for that. Um, it's it's uh, very cost effective for people just getting into Pro Tools. It's got um, 16 inputs, up to 32 audio tracks. I'm looking at the Avid website right here and it kind of spells it out. So Pro Tools Artist is the small version. Pro Tools First is gone. Pro Tools Artist replaces that. What was previously called Pro Tools is now Pro Tools Studio. So if you have a current subscription or perpetual license with uh, an active or current annual support plan for Pro Tools, you are automatically bumped up to Pro Tools Studio. And what that does for you is it uh, a few things. Number one, it bumps the inputs. I, I don't think that was bumped up before, maybe it was. So up to 64 inputs at a time, which is good. 512 audio tracks, that's a, a serious bump. It was 256 in a version previously this year or last year and before that it was 128. So it's 512 audio tracks and um, you know some other things here. But down here towards the bottom, the stereo surround, Dolby Atmos and Amb Amb Ambisonic. So uh, this uh, version, Pro Tools standard, used to be limited to stereo, mono and stereo tracks only. Now it supports multi-channel uh, tracks. So you can have up to 7.1.2 audio tracks and aux tracks and it supports Dolby Atmos. Um, and I'm gonna say mixing, but what I'm hoping we'll see out of this is Dolby Atmos composing, right? Now that everybody's kind of jumped on board with streaming, you know, in terms of streaming services of, of uh, being able to, um, you know, distribute Dolby Atmos and a lot of the old catalogs are all being remixed, but I, what I would really like to see, and I haven't seen much of, and I'm sure it's out there, is songs or material 
feel that is composed with Dolby Atmos from from the start, and I think that um, offers or lends some uh, some really creative aspects here. And the cool thing about this is um, this was previously only available in Pro Tools Ultimate, so it was quite um, an investment in terms of money to get into Pro Tools Ultimate. And you still do need the Dolby Renderer, the production suite. That's three hundred dollars. So you add that to your Pro Tools Studio application, and you're you're on board with with Dolby Atmos. And I think that's a really cool thing. It uh, makes it much more accessible to a lot of people. In addition to that, you have now in Pro Tools Studio advanced automation features, and we're going to dig in on some of those because that's some really cool stuff. If you're doing mixing, if you're you're mixing, you know, serious mixing. And these advanced automation tools will come in handy. Pro Tools Studio is $32 a month, or I think it's $300, $299 a year if you do the annual subscription. And all the way to the right here in this um, uh, web page is Pro Tools Flex, formerly known as Pro Tools Ultimate, formerly known as Pro Tools HD. Avid, come on, make up your mind. Stop changing names. Um, this for a subscription is $100 a month or $1,000 a year, which to me is a little bit too pricey, but uh, whatever. Um, it is what it is. So previously, the differences between what is now Pro Tools Flex and Pro Tools Studio used to be quite significant. The features that were only available in the higher end version of Pro Tools was 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 significant. That has been, you know, slowly whittled away. They've been adding new features previously in the ultimate version or HD version and been adding them to Pro Tools standard. So now this kind of, it almost levels them out. Pro Tools Flex or Pro Tools Ultimate is required for your, your HDX systems, your HD native systems, um, and also the, uh, the carbon interface with DSP. But um, that's kind of the main, main difference because uh, now Pro Tools Studio has multi-channel tracks, surround mixing, uh, Dolby Atmos, and the advanced automation. So I think that's a really cool thing. So that is um, the subscriptions and the names. Okay, this next feature is is a feature that has been requested for many, many years, and uh, it's finally here. The ability to create your own custom keyboard shortcuts in Pro Tools. And I'm kind of torn on this. Uh, for me, I'm not on my own system all the time. I'm going from one system to another, to another, to another. So having custom uh, customized keyboard shortcuts doesn't make sense to me. I, I, I've kind of got all, not all of them, a bunch of them uh, memorized. So I know, you know, if I go to any other system, they're all gonna be the same. But uh, if you're working on the same system all the time, it makes sense to, um, to, to be able to create some shortcuts that you prefer, that you like, and remap the keyboard if you'd like. So it's really easy to do. You go to the setup menu, keyboard shortcuts, and you'll see this window here. And um, this gives you an idea of how many keyboard shortcuts there are in Pro Tools. I mean, I don't know, hundreds? It's a lot, put it that way. And it allows you to remap um, just about anything. And it will also give you some feedback. So if you map, you know, try to use a keyboard shortcut that's already used elsewhere, it's gonna tell you that, hey, you're gonna have to go unmap that one first. Now, um, I just said I don't use it, but there is an example uh, or two that um, I, I, would, I will take advantage of because not everybody has the ability to use a full-size QWERTY keyboard. And when I say full-size, I mean the numeric keypad section. To me, there's a lot of really cool shortcuts there, but if you're using a laptop, for example, at least on the Mac side, the keyboards of the of the laptops are are short. They don't include the numeric keypad. Uh, oftentimes, iMac, some of the uh, other computers that you may get will come with a um, a smaller keyboard. And there's a feature that that um, is very handy for people that are editing long form. Uh, like audio books or, or interviews, things that are maybe 30 minutes, 60 minutes long or whatever. And that's custom uh, shuttle, right? So the, the shortcut to, to play back at a faster speed is control six, seven, eight, or nine on the numeric keypad section. And that will, you know, ramp up the playback faster and faster. And, um, 
but one of the cool features uh, with Pro Tools is the ability to create a custom shuttle speed. So I'll go into preferences here and I'll go to operation. I'll make the cut custom shuttle speed, I don't know, about 150%. And uh, custom shuttle is accessed through control nine, but number nine on the keypad, not number nine in the alpha or the QWERTY section of the keyboard. So I can now remap that for laptop users or people that are using smaller keyboards. So I can go up to setup menu, keyboard shortcuts, and I'm gonna search for shuttle. And there's a whole bunch of shuttle shortcuts. I'm looking for shuttle speed at nine. Uh, it's this one, shuttle speed from selection start. Okay, so I'm gonna double click here and I'm just gonna press control nine on the alpha section, not on the numeric keypad. So now I have access to that shortcut um, by using a, a shorter keyboard. So there's a few reasons why this is handy. Now, the cool thing is, is you can always get back to the defaults. You can also save multiple versions of keyboard shortcuts. So if you're at a system that has multiple users, each user can create their own, you know, mapped out shortcuts and save them as a preset and you can recall them um, quite easily. So this is very powerful and a long time coming. Custom Keyboard Shortcuts. Okay, this next feature is Pro Tools Search. And at first I was like, all right, whatever, search. All right, cool, whatever. But after kind of digging in on it, it's actually really cool. And it's something I think I'll use quite often. Um, it's a generic search. It allows you to find a track or a clip or a memory locator, uh, a few other things. Let's see, we'll take a look at the what's new list. Uh, search tracks by name, search clips, memory locations, track groups, audio suite plugins, plugins, yeah. So it's very cool. And the way you access it is a couple of ways, right? So the window menu, and then Pro Tools Search. On a Mac, the shortcut is Control Shift S. On a PC, it is. And the way this works is a search dialog, dialog pops up, and I want to find the kick track. I'm going to type in kick. There it is, and it selects it, right? So I've got, I don't know, about 32 tracks in here, and in, in the screen right now, I can only see about nine. So let's do a search for uh, a track that's not in view. So I'm gonna do Shift Control S, and I'm gonna do uh, Vocal 3. And you see as I type in there, it gives me a list of all the kind of criteria that match what I've typed in so far. So Vocal 3, it puts that track at the very top of the, of the edit window, which is cool. I really like that. Um, and let's do a search for one of the clips, right? So um, how about claps? So one, I'm going to do a search, shift, control, S, claps. Now, Claps is the track, 01 is the one clip that's on there. It selects the clip, and in this case, I have the time, timeline selection tied to, to the track name, so it selects the track as well. If I turn that off and I do a search for, let's do a search for the, the uh, snare clip, S-A-N-R-E, and I'm gonna go 01, that's the clip and it selects it, but it didn't take me up there. That's interesting. There it is, there's selected clips. So I'm gonna leave this feature on so that it ties them together. Another cool thing is I've got a bunch of memory locators in here. Control Shift S, I wanna go to uh, verse uh, two, and it takes me right to that memory locator. I think that's really cool right there. I'm gonna do Shift Control S and go to the bridge and boom, takes me right there. I can start playback from the bridge. I'm looking for an EQ plugin, shift control S, EQ. Now it's showing me audio suite and it's not showing me real time plugins, which I think is kind of a drag. Uh, I would suspect that it would show all of the track base, but then again, I'm not on a track. So how would it know which track I wanna put this on? So I guess this makes sense. So if I, there's an audio suite plugin that I wanna get into, let's do gain. I know that's a, an audio suite plugin. Boom, there it is. There's the audio suite gain plugin. All right, so some cool functionality. I'm pleasantly surprised <laughs> with this one. I thought it was a sleeper, but it's it's a it's a it's a cool feature. Pro Tools Search.
Here are a few smaller, but still cool features added to 2022.4, video color space. So if you're doing video playback out of Pro Tools, you have the option to change the color space or the color of that video right on the video track. Dolby Atmos improvements, a couple of tweaks for people that are using Dolby Atmos, and hopefully this is more people now with Pro Tools Studio. Um, getting started tab in the dashboard. This is great for new Pro Tools users. So if you go to uh, the dashboard, which is the window that opens up when you launch Pro Tools, you'll notice another item in there called Getting Started. And there's a bunch of uh, Pro Tools Getting Started tutorials in here. Um, I have not looked at them yet, but um, that's a good thing, right? If anything that helps people get uh, more knowledgeable about whatever kind of work it is that they're doing. All right. So uh, getting started. Uh, improved support for Windows audio devices. This is a good thing. If you are using um, Windows-based Pro Tools system, uh, especially if you're using a, uh, an audio interface that doesn't have its own drivers, but it's using the system audio drivers, this has been improved for Pro Tools. So this is a good thing, and there's a lot of Windows users out there. So hopefully you'll see a, a better performance with... Um, uh, Windows Pro Tools on uh, a variety of different audio interfaces. Uh, spot to edit insertion command. This has uh, been added to the clip list. So you can take a clip and in the menu, uh, where is it? It is, I thought, there it is, spot to edit insertion. And that should have put it right there. Okay, let me try it again. I'm going to put my cursor right here and... It's not in the right click, it's in the main menu. Spot to edit insertion, and there it is. That's a cool feature, long overdue, but good. All right, uh, auxiliary input tracks default to solo safe. So when you create a new aux, in tra uh, aux track, it, uh, aux input track, let me do that. Track menu, new, uh, mono, I'll do a stereo aux input hit create and you'll notice that the solo button is grayed out or it's solo safe which means this track will not mute as a result of another track being soloed typically auxes are used for send return routing configs or sub mixing and you will often solo safe solo safe them so that they don't mute so for example if i solo this tom track the other hats track will mute as a result of this solo but the aux track will not of course i don't have any routing going through it right now but that's a good thing it saves you a couple of mouse clicks that's not bad uh, disable DSP mode when disabling record input preference. This is for hybrid systems that have DSP, like uh, the Carbon, Avid Carbon audio interface and HDX Pro Tools systems. And Pro Tools preference for Yukon display of assigned knob control. I haven't played with that one yet. Sounds pretty tweaky to me. But stand by, because the cool stuff is coming up next. This next feature set is deep. It's functionality, as I've mentioned, that's been in Pro Tools Ultimate for quite some time. And I wanna to prove to you that I'm actually in Pro Tools Studio, formerly known just Pro Tool, as Pro Tools or Pro Tools Standard. Pro Tools Studio, that's the, uh, the splash screen there. And what I'm talking about is advanced automation functionality. Now you had very powerful automation in Pro Tools for, for the longest time, no problem there. But Pro Tools Ultimate took the whole automation thing to a completely no another level, especially if you have a control surface. It may be a small control surface, an Avid S1 or an S3 or a bigger one, S4, S6. A lot of this advanced automation functionality is aimed at using a control surface and the ability to use, you know, control multiple parameters simultaneously, right? Because you can grab multiple faders and knobs and do all this sort of thing, um, you know, simultaneously. Whereas if you don't have a control surface, you're doing a parameter at a time. Now, this Powerful stuff is, is cool if you don't have a control surface too. So uh, either way, there's some really cool functionality here. Unfortunately, I can't get into all of it right now, but I am creating individual videos for each one of these functions. So keep an eye out on the, on the YouTube channel and the website. So the first thing I'm talking about is under the edit menu. And again, I'm going to go to Pro Tools Studio just to 
to remind you that I am in Pro Tools Studio, not Pro Tools Ultimate. Uh, go to the edit menu, you'll see a new automation menu. And this list of automation functionality is, is very cool. Convert volume automation to clip gain, convert clip gain to volume automation, coalesce volume automation and clip gain, write to current, write to all enabled, trim to current, glide functionality. So this will allow you to take a plug-in automate uh, or volumes and pans and sends or whatever and have them morph and change over time instead of having a very you know abrupt change from one setting to the next you can have uh, parameters uh, automate and change them over an amount of time and it's based on the selection that you choose so it could be a very short amount of time that you have these parameters change or it can evolve over a longer period of time so that's part of it the other part of it is in the floating automation window and that's found under the window menu you automation where is it there it is now with pro tools the previous version pro Tools standard you had basically half of this window you have the top half you could suspend automation you could enable or disable the writing of these different volume automation modes so plug in volume pan send volume send pan send mute all that stuff was there but the bottom section um, manual write and write on stop is really cool really powerful auto join another cool feature auto match preview and capture snapshots so with pro tools alone you can capture one snapshot if you have the avid control app or which is free by the way for uh, android or um iOS devices, you can capture, I think it's up to, I want to say 48 snapshots. And this is great uh, to capture the automation that you've written in a particular section, let's say verse one, and you want to be able to paste that same automation into verse two and verse three and so on. You could create a snapshot for automation across everything, plugins, sends, volumes, pans, all that stuff and have a snapshot for verses, a snapshot for uh, choruses, a snapshot for bridge. This is handy, really handy in post-production. If you have a, 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 a show that you're doing and it cuts from one scene to another back to the original scene, you know, scene A to scene B to scene A and then scene C and then later on it comes back to scene A. You can make a snapshot of each of these different scenes and easily paste that automation at every instance of that scene again later on. Of course, you're going to need to touch it up and doctor it up a little bit, but it will get you uh, very close to where you've, what you've already mixed in scene A previously. You can paste it into every existing scene A moving down, down the, the timeline. So very powerful feature. Um, so that is kind of an overview of the advanced automation functionality that is now included in Pro Tools Studio as well as Pro Tools Ultimate. So this is a, a, a very cool thing. All right, this is multi-channel tracks, audio tracks, aux tracks, master faders, etc. So again, previously only available in Pro Tools Ultimate, now available in Pro Tools Studio. And I'm going to show you that I am in fact in Pro Tools Studio. There we go. And now when I go to the new track menu, I have the ability to create mono, stereo, LCR, three channel, quad, 5.0, 5.1, 7 .0, all the way up to 7.1.2 uh, audio tracks or master faders or aux tracks. These are all very key in doing um, surround mixes, of course but more importantly, Dolby Atmos. So what I'm hoping uh, we will see out of this is the accessibility to Dolby Atmos functionality to more people because it's now available in Pro Tools Studio. And of course you do need to add, if you really wanna do the, the, the Dolby Atmos um, audio file, you know, finished files, you, you need to get the Dolby Renderer, the production suite, that's $300. You can purchase it at the Avid site. Um, and you incorporate that with your Pro Tools system and you can um, not only mix, but hopefully we'll see more of Atmos uh, composing, right? So the writing songs with this, this immersive audio thing in mind and not just repurpose 
repurposing songs that were originally created for stereo or were recorded and mixed in stereo now we can we can see uh, a lot more people gaining access to this functionality so this is a cool thing so i'm going to create a 7.1.2 aux track and i can tell that let me get rid of these other tracks here so i can focus on this one this track has got um 10 meters right here 7.1.2 7 plus 1 is 8 plus 2 is 10 that's an aux track i can do um you know 5.1 audio track or i could do a 7.1.2 audio track i can do um you know a whole variety to 5.1 whatever i want is now available in terms of multi-channel tracks in pro tool studio this is a great thing Last but not least in this new release, and I didn't see this listed anywhere. I told you at the beginning that uh, the What's New document listed, you know, the new features. It didn't really mention anything about the advanced automation or the uh, multi-channel tracks. It mentions that on the website somewhere else. <clears throat> but um, the, here's the third thing that was brought over previously only in Pro Tools Ultimate, now available in Pro Tools Studio, which I think is a great thing as well. And I haven't seen it documented anywhere. And I had to double check. I was like, wait a minute, did they put this in there? And this is clip based EQ and dynamics, right? So, you know, clip based gain has been in. in um, Pro Tools all versions for quite some time, and that's what this little meter is down at the bottom left corner of each audio clip. You can grab that and bring the gain down on a per clip basis, right? So I can change the clip of e any one of these little clips. Okay, well, so I'm gonna option click on a Mac or alt click on a PC to reset those back to their default gain. Now what you can do in Pro Tools Studio, and again, I will prove that I'm in Pro Tools Studio, not Pro Tools Ultimate, there we are, is clip-based EQ and gain. So the same concept that you would um, use clip gain volume, where you can change gain on a per clip basis, now you can do that with EQ. So I'm gonna go to this upper right corner of the timeline here, hit, click on this little down arrow, and click on this button here to pop open the clip-based EQ and filter and dynamics, right? So if I select a clip here, I could apply a filter. So I'm gonna turn that on and I'm gonna set the frequency up to, I don't know, something high. I'm gonna go very noticeable. Okay, so there's the processed guitar track. Just that clip though. Now when it goes to the next clip, it's gonna go back. Now this third clip, let's say I wanna do something different. I'm gonna tweak the EQ completely differently. And I have to figure out how to use it. There we go. go. Okay, so now I've got three different clips with three different clip-based EQs. I'm gonna play, the, play them all the way through. There's the first one with a filter enabled. Second one, flat, nothing going on there. Third one, so if I select it, I see the EQ. I have to select on the clip, I forgot that. Here's the third one. Now I can do the same thing with the four band EQ or the high pass and low pass filters. Uh, and dynamics as well. So I'm gonna put some compression across all of these and by de and by default the ratio is one to one, which is weird. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna take the ratio up. I'm gonna go um, three to one and we'll take the threshold down a little too much. There's with it. So without it, now that first clip has got EQ. So anyway, I can put compression on a bunch of clips, individual clips, and it will turn on and off automatically. It's all clip-based EQ filters 
and Dynamics, a very cool thing that, again, was previously only available in Pro Tools Ultimate, now available in Pro Tools Studio. This makes EQing and Dynamics little tricky sections much, much easier. All right, see you next time.